the TNO episode of my solar system thing, and I'm gonna show you the first TNO or the. Alright, welcome to Jupiter. It's the fifth planet from the Sun, and it's the largest gas giant. It's on the opposite side of the asteroid belt from Mars, and we've been filming these gas giant videos in reverse order, so even though it's the first one for you, it's the last one for me, so I'm kind of wiped, and if I sound a bit tired, that's why. Now, Jupiter is like the Sun, even though it's ten times smaller in terms of radius, it's still way too big to model. Um, a little bit smaller than my height currently, about five feet wide, although for reference I do have an image of myself next to the giant Jupiter model at Adventure Science Center, which is at roughly the same scale. Now Jupiter has um, very fast winds as it is a gas giant, and it has bands, has a banded appearance as it is. Um, and the bands move quickly uh, across the planet. The, there are many different colors, and it, one of its most notable features is the Great Red Spot, which is a giant red hurricane that has been going on for centuries, and even though it's shrinking, it's still larger than Earth. It has 95 known moons, but the first four to be discovered are the four largest by far all but one of the four Galilean moons. They're called Galilean moons because they were discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610. Um, three of them are larger than the moon, one of them is smaller, and I was going to hold them up using these sticks, but because we're in nature, they don't want to stand up. So I'm just going to use them as markers for where they are. The first one, is Io. It's, very, it's a very close moon to Jupiter. It's a bit larger than Earth's moon. And all of those spots you see, those are volcanoes. There are no craters on Io. It's all washed away because of the sulfur from the volcanoes, and it's also why it's yellow. And the reason there are a lot of volcanoes is because it's, um, is because of tidal friction caused by Jupiter. It's very close to Jupiter. Now the next one is called Europa. This one's a little bit smaller than Earth's moon. It's covered in ice with a subsurface ocean, which means there could be life on it. Hypothetically, of course. And then, next one is called Ganymede. It is the largest moon in the solar system, and it's 10% larger than Mercury. It also has a subsurface ocean. And now, if we go out a bit farther, the final Galilean moon, Callisto. It's the third largest moon in the solar system and second largest of Jupiter. It's sl very slightly smaller than Mercury and it's covered in craters due to the asteroids that hit, uh, that hit it over the millions or billions of years, and it's one of the oldest moons in the solar system. And so, yeah, that's close to... Saturn is the sixth planet in the solar system. A tongue twister, I know, but it is the second gas giant and the second largest planet like Jupiter, it was too large to model for this project, and while I don't have an image of me next to the giant Saturn at the Science Museum, what I do have is the power of video editing. Now, Saturn also has strong winds like Jupiter, but it doesn't have as defined bands as Jupiter does. Now, Saturn has a bit of a yellowish tint, and a very extensive ring system. It has um, 195, no, 146 moons, seven of which were large enough for me to represent here. The first
first one is very close to Saturn. It's called Mimas. It looks like this, and it has a similar appearance to the Death Star from Star Wars. That's what it's famous for, pretty much. It's also the smallest rounded object in the solar system at just under 400 kilometers in diameter. And the next one is called Enceladus. It's about this big. It's uh, very pale blue or white with blue stripes a bit. And it, it has guide, geysers on its south pole that feed into Saturn's giant E-ring. The next one is called Tethys, and it has a very large crater right here. It also has some yellow discoloration uh, from Saturn. All of the moons have yellow discoloration, but Tethys has the most of it. And the next one is Dion. It's here, it's about the same size as Tethys, and it's a much darker color. Here's here. Then the next one, second largest moon of Saturn, ninth largest in the solar system, uh, called Rhea. And it was thought to have rings around it for a while, but these rings were disproven. Goes here. Now, it's a bit farther to the next moon, but come up to this one, Titan. It's the largest moon of Saturn, second largest moon in the solar system overall. It is larger than Mercury, about 10% larger than Mercury, similar to Ganymede. And it has an orange, thick orange atmosphere and methane lakes, which means there could be life on it. And now we go to a much farther moon between Titan and the moon we're going to. There's another minor moon called Hyperion. And it's the, I didn't model it here, but it's the largest minor moon of Saturn. And it orbits chaotically around the planet. It also looks like a sponge. Put a picture of it on the screen. Yeah. And now we come to the final major moon of Saturn called Iapetus. It is the 11th largest moon of the solar system and the third largest of Saturn. It's a little bit smaller than Rhea and it's quite far out for its size being uh, about here. It actually has a striking color pattern. One side of it is light colored and the other side is dark colored. It has a ridge running around its equator that makes it so that it technically isn't round while still technically being round. And it's so far out and so big that if it had, if submoons did exist in our solar system, this could hypothetically have a submoon the size of Mimas. Yes, that's her. While Jupiter and Saturn were too large to model for my project, Uranus, on the other hand, wasn't. And I have made a model which took far too long to make, but at least it's here now. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. Another pronunciation is Uranus, but I'll stick with Uranus for now. It has also has a large ring system, but not quite as large as Saturn's. I haven't represented it here, but it does have rings. All of the gas giants have rings, in fact. It is tilted at an axis of 98 degrees, and because of its sideways tilt, it's the coldest planet in the solar system. It also has a lot of strong winds and methane in its atmosphere. It also has 27 moons, only, only five of which are large enough to be spherical. I have moon models in this bag here. First moon, um, first spherical moon, anyway, which goes right here, is Miranda. And it 
it's very awesome, and it's very close to Uranus, right here. It has lots of icy ridges. The next one is called Ariel. It's the brightest moon of Uranus. A lot bigger than Miranda. Also orbits very close, about here. And there's an Umbriel. It's about the same size as Ariel, but unlike Ariel, it's the darkest moon of Uranus. It's the largest moon of Uranus and the eighth largest moon in the solar system. It's here. And then, lastly, farther out, we have Oberon, the reddest major moon of Uranus, second largest of Uranus, and tenth largest moon in the solar system. It goes here. Pretty far out. And now, this is the major moon. That's Uranus. I have reached the eighth planet on this model, Neptune. And now, considering how long the Uranus model took me to make, I really didn't want to make another one on the exact same size, just so I could paint it a different color. So while I didn't make something for Neptune, I did find something for Neptune. And it just so happens to be a conveniently sized rubber ball. Neptune is the smallest out of all of the gas giants, and it is a bright blue planet. Like Uranus, it is roughly four times the diameter of Earth, and it has the fastest wind speeds out of all of the planets. It also has a large great dark spot that is appearing and disappearing in different places throughout the planet occasionally. Because of its active atmosphere, it's also a much darker blue than Uranus, despite them being made out of mostly the same stuff. Now, Neptune has 14 moons, and 13 of those moons are tiny minor moons that are irregularly shaped. The only one that's large enough for me to consider it worth talking about is this one, Proteus. It's the largest out of all of the minor moons, at just over 400 kilometers in diameter. It orbits at around here, so very close to the planet. But there is another moon called Triton, and it's this. It's slightly larger than Pluto, and it's the largest moon in the solar system that orbits in retrograde leading several scientists to believe that it was a captured dwarf planet from the Kuiper Belt, and it will go towards Neptune and form into a ring system in a few billion years.